Full spoilers for Elden Ring lie ahead. Equipping the Great Rune of a slain demigod is a lot less cool than it sounds like it'd be. They feel like they should be Metroidvania-esque, giving you new cool powers that open up new options, you know? The only one that comes close to that is the Great Rune of the Unborn. With most, you beat a boss, equip their rune, and use a rune arc to activate it for a decent buff. I think the system is fine, but when you compare mechanics and flavor, it feels a bit lame. At least with their mutually exclusive nature, we can ask, which great rune is the best? And that sounds like it could be an interesting playground of theory testing and crafting different builds to suit different runes. But it's not. The best rune is Godric's. The first one you get from the demigod who's considered a laughingstock, that's the best rune in the game. Plus 5 to every stat is phenomenal. It's equivalent to 40 levels. Now, the rune does fall off at higher levels because you get diminishing returns once the stats get too high. So once those plus fives aren't as golden as they used to be, then the other great runes do have some use. Morgoth and Rykard give you a lot more survivability, which is something that's good to have when dying means you need to use a consumable to reactivate the great rune. Mogs is gimmicky and not great, but it allows you to do some funny stuff when invading. Radon's is good at really high levels, but for the majority of the game, it is objectively worse than Godric's, giving smaller bonuses in less stats. And finally, we have the absolute garbage fire that is Melania's Great Rune. With it, you're able to strike an enemy to recoup a chunk of the health lost from the last damage you took, but the opportunity only lasts a couple seconds. The amount you get back is determined by your weapon and the type of attack, so a jumping attack with a greatsword will restore more than a stab with a dagger. It's essentially identical to the rally system from their earlier game, Bloodborne. However, in Bloodborne, this was a central mechanic that played a prominent role in the gameplay, and it was pretty universally liked. So why is Melania's rune? Absolute useless garbage. Well, before I answer that, I actually want to talk about some bafflingly stupid design choices that you encounter in your efforts to restore the Great Rune. That's right, restore, not collect. The absolute headaches of the Halig Tree and Melania herself have been talked about a ton already by plenty of other people. I'm talking about the Divine Tower. So once you've collected a Great Rune, you can't actually use it until you've gone to the corresponding Divine Tower and restored it. This does not apply to the Great Rune of the Unborn. The towers vary in complexity. Some are just an elevator ride, whereas, say, Rikards is hidden behind illusory walls, and Radon's requires you to climb it from the outside. Melania's Divine Tower isn't a place you access by just walking up to it. Instead, you need to take a specific way gate from the Divine Bridge in Lanedell to the tower. And this is where the problem lies. On paper, this works pretty well. The view from the isolated tower is awesome, and the path to the way gate itself is pretty clear. You go through the old round table hold, up this elevator, and it's right there. If you go to the tower before you have Melania's Great Rune, you're stuck on the doorstep and have to either teleport to a grace to leave, or go cliff diving. Again, this does make sense. Every other tower also locks you out if you don't actually have the Great Rune yet, but the specific location of the locked door varies. So far, everything is making sense. There's a path to the tower that's understandable, and you're only locked out until you have Melania's Great Rune. But then things start to get questionable when we look at the Tower of Return. In the far, far south of the map on the Weeping Peninsula is the tower, and on top of it is a transporter chest trap that will teleport you to the Divine Bridge. You can't access the rest of Lanedale from here, unless you cheat. The only things you can do are activate the Grace, fight the Golem, and snag the Blessed Dew Talisman. The Waygate is not usable. For it to activate, you need to access the Divine Bridge via the Round Table Hold Elevator below. This leaves the whole warp feeling kinda pointless, since you can't access the tower or the rest of Lanedale from here. The only reason to go is to grab the talisman. It's basically just a Mario Odyssey painting. It warps you, says, hey, check out this place you'll go later, gives you a little bonus, and sends you home. Although I guess New Donk City didn't have a 50-foot golem trying to kill you. But even though this teleport can feel a little pointless, it's actually entirely necessary. Late into the game, you burn the Erd Tree and Lanedale is destroyed, turning it into the Ashen Capital. The vast majority of the city is inaccessible now, including the Round Table Hold. This is why the Tower of Return exists. It's so that you have a way to access the Divine Bridge, and thus the Isolated Tower, even once you've burnt the Erd Tree and destroyed the city. So good thinking on the devs' part, making sure that you weren't locked out. Of course, if you did already get the Grace, you can just teleport to... Firmsoft. What? 
Where's the Divine Bridge Site of Grace? Goes right there. See, I drew it with a magic marker. Yeah, for some stupid fucking reason, you lose this sight of grace when you burn the Erd Tree. That means that you are required to make your way all the way down to the Weeping Peninsula, which will be about a hundred levels below you by this point, so you can use this one specific chest to get back to the Divine Bridge. Melania is the hardest boss in the game. Whether you think she's good or bad, we can all agree that she's the most difficult. This means that you'll want to save her for last, even waiting until after you've beaten the final boss, because they're much easier than she is. And even if you fight her before the final boss, you'll almost certainly fight her after you've already beaten Malekith and destroyed Landell. So you pretty much have to take this bafflingly stupid route to restore her rune. You just beat the hardest boss in the game, probably the hardest boss FromSoft has ever made, but before you get to use her great rune, you need to trek through this pathetically low-level guard tower? This completely butchers the pacing, especially since you'll be pretty much required to Google this process if you did not encounter this teleporter trap a hundred levels ago. And to add insult to injury, the golem doesn't normally respawn after you've killed them, but they do come back once Landell has been turned into the Ashen Capital. It's like the game wants to make it clear how much you wasted your time coming here before. Since you can get the talisman really early with this teleporter, and you'll likely be waiting until after Landell is burnt to restore the rune, this means finding the elevator up to the Divine Bridge in the Old Round Table hold is completely pointless. The most baffling part is that the elevator is still modeled and there is almost a path to it in the Ashen Capital. You can get to this area with the patrolling gargoyle, and from here, you can literally see the elevator. All they had to do was give you a slope made of ash, or have some of the bars break off so you can get through here. But as it stands, there's invisible walls making sure that you can't get in. And if you do manage to get to the elevator somehow, it doesn't even function! And as a final middle finger, once you've gotten Melania's Great Rune and can finally enter the tower, there's a grace at the top. Why is this behind the locked doors? If this was accessible without the rune, you could just teleport straight here right after Melania as long as you'd gone here before. Instead, you can only access it after you have the Great Rune, but if you have the rune, you can restore it right then and there, meaning there's literally no reason to ever return here! So why give us a way to teleport to the tower now? I just... There is so much bafflingly stupid design here that could all be fixed in 10 seconds! Just don't remove the Divine Bridge Grace after burning Landell, or let us walk into the elevator and take it up, or put a Grace at the tower's entrance! I just... It's a tsunami of stupid choices that I had to talk about. But... On to the rune itself. After you've found the Albanoric woman, and made it through the consecrated snowfield, and dealt with the invisible assassins, and trekked through the Hallig Tree, and beat Melania, and slogged back to the Weeping Peninsula, and run past or killed the golem that respawned, and finally restored the Great Rune, you can use a valuable rune arc to activate it. And once you do, you'll notice this icon in the top left corner of the screen. The most difficult and obnoxious Great Rune to get, which you need to use a rare consumable to activate, has a downside. Every other great rune is a pure buff, but for some reason, Melanius has a trade-off to it. When you have her great rune activated, your healing flasks have their effectiveness reduced by 30%. Why does it have a downside? Why? Why is it the only great rune that has a downside? You need to use a rune heart to activate it every time you die as well, so having something that directly hurts your survivability is extra awful! You had to beat the hardest boss for this thing! And the thing is, the upside isn't even close to worth it! The healing you get back from this thing is pathetic. You barely recover any health when striking an enemy, and the time frame to do it is so tight that you'll lose your chance before you can get enough swings in to undo all the damage. But even if the healing wasn't so abysmal, this rune would still be fundamentally flawed. Bloodborne was a great game that was built with Rally at its very core. The weapons, the enemies, the healing, the movement controls, all were designed with this system in mind. If you've got a system like this, every player has the exact same goal after they've been hit by an enemy. Hit them back until they've recouped as much health as they can, and make sure not to get hit again. At first, it might not seem like this should affect much. Hit the enemies and don't get hit yourself are the goals central to this kind of combat. How can a system that just gives further incentive to these existing goals change much? You see, this system means that when designing enemies and their attacks, you can make them with it in mind. You have a very clear picture of how nearly every player and build will respond to damage. That's not the case in Elden Ring. Players who get hit might focus on escaping the situation, 
or they might try to desperately get a few hits in hoping to finish the enemy off, or they might have planned to get hit in order to trade blows. Without a system like this, the devs cannot be confident in what the player's default response to damage will be. When the rally system is central, you can design every enemy around it, but when it's only an optional feature activated after they've defeated the hardest boss in the game, you can't, or at least shouldn't, design around it. To see the impact this system has on game and enemy design, compare multi-hit attacks and strong single-hit attacks. In Elden Ring, there are technically still differences between these two types, but they're specific and technical. A strong attack that takes 30% of your health is fundamentally identical to three hits that take 10% each. But then if we factor in the rally system, if you can undo all the damage from the last hit you took, you can get back all 30% of your health after taking that strong hit, but only 10% after the multi-hit. It creates a big difference between two types of attacks in a game where they're designed as if they're identical. So you can see how the presence of this system would make a monumental difference in designing enemies, and then there are a million other more subtle ways that it can make a ton of things more or less impactful. Elden Ring is absolutely not designed around this rune being active, so the game forces you to pay a heavy price by nerfing the reliable healing method that the game is fully designed around in exchange for a niche system that it was absolutely not built for. So after all you've done, after all the work, frustration, and the resource cost, you may have very well left yourself nerfed. This rune is absolute rotten garbage. I'd like to thank all of my patrons, with an extra special thanks to Audie T, Amy Lech, and Little Dude 901.